Let me solve Hector. Is this going to be like the time you found a spider with one broken leg and you tore the castle apart looking for something small enough to make a splint out of? <laughs> no. I do wonder a little bit if that is Lenore's thought process, right? Like some people do love to caretake things and to see something that's broken and fix it and make it better. And so the thought is, is Hector her little tiny project of something that she can repair? And what could be cuter than seeing a little tiny spider with a splint on its leg? Just saying. I also need you to leave before I decide to kill you for keeping our guest in such a manner. Was that for my benefit? So that I'll think you're sympathetic? Why would you think such a thing? Vampires, you like to play with your food. And Hector is a little bit less naive. You can hear Isaac's word about how... I see the vampires as cats. Cats play with their food all the time. And so now that Hector's been through all of the things that he does, he looks at the world with a different perspective, which often happens to us when we've gone through pain or hardship. We don't look at the world with as rosy colored glasses. And so we get to see how the entire dynamic between them gets to evolve. Marana is the organizer, Striker is the warrior. Her. And you? The diplomat. And she's so good at this. So when you're trying to build trust, especially when someone else doesn't trust you at all, it's really important that you're very transparent. So she's giving him all of this information that she doesn't actually have to give. And in a way that's coming off that it's very soft, not forced, just direct. Because if she gave off any thoughts of manipulation or conniving, right away his defenses would go back up and she wants him to feel comfortable with her. She's starting out trying to garner his trust in order to get him to do what she wants him to do. Let's just have something to eat and talk. <laughs> you call the guard, tell him to unlock this door. <laughs> well, wasn't that fun? It's an interesting thing because I think that our default is to believe that kindness is weakness. If someone is soft-spoken or thoughtful, that must mean that they're weak. And actually, it's the opposite. If you don't have to show off a lot of bravado and don't have to be loud and you don't have to throw your ego everywhere, usually that means that you actually have a secure attachment type. You shouldn't mistake kindness for weakness. And that's what Hector did. But again, you he has to try to take as shot as he can. He's kind of locked in a cage, so you understand it. But it's those that are soft-spoken and sure of themselves that actually have a much stronger ego strength. Those that give off a lot of bravado and have to give themselves compliments and act really aggressively, that's usually because they're feeling insecure in who they are themselves. People that are sure of themselves and have secure internal self-esteem, they don't have to step on others. They don't have to make fun of others. They don't have to put other people down because they're sure of who they are and they're standing in the world. I'm only alive because Carmilla wants a forge master, aren't I? I'll answer your question. Yes, let's talk about what you would like. Shoes. <laughs> now think about being alone, being mistreated, and having someone show you even the ounce of kindness. For people that are in that situation, they can go through something that we call Stockholm Syndrome, where you start to find alignment with the person that's keeping you captive. There is a certain amount of controversy. There's not a lot of cases. And so because of that, we haven't done a lot of scientific analysis on this, but definitely in cases where people are being mistreated or abused that want for some kindness and consideration can be really, really great. And that need to find someone that you can feel safe and comfortable with grows even greater because think of it, you're scared, you're mistreated. And so even a small little tiny ounce of kindness means so much. If you've ever been bullied every single day or you're alone in school and someone offers you to sit down next to them or to share their lunch. That little tiny act, there are times where it's something so small, like even a smile that can make someone stay because perhaps you're the only one that smiled at this person all day and maybe they've been going through a really hard day. And it means so much more because you have so little of it. A lot of it also is 
that appreciation. What was Dracula going to give you? I thought it was going to be a human population controlled and incarcerated. So he lied to you. What was he going to give you for doing this work that he lied to you about? So the different things that we would need to have in place to have it even be considered Stockholm Syndrome would be one, the person being held would have to develop positive feelings for their captor, the person that's mistreating them. You can definitely see that building between Hector and Lenore even at this stage. Two, they have to not have a previous relationship because this is a relationship that only develops under duress. What was your reward for serving a man who lied about his intents? I assumed I would live outside whatever enclosures were placed around the remaining humans. Another one is the refusal to cooperate with those that are rescuing you or helping you. You actually find an alignment and a protection to the person that's holding you captive. You assumed? I'm not sure there was ever a conversation as such. He would have continued to need night creatures. He seemed to value my advice, so maybe I would have kept a role in his court. Assumed. And also the hostage or person being held, their belief in the humanity or kind intentions of the person that's holding them. That they feel that they have similar values or a similar alignment, that they're much more similar than they had expected at the beginning. Seem to, maybe. Did you not want a reward, Hector? Or were you just expecting one would be presented? And Lenore does a really good job of trying to find out what Hector wants. In diplomacy, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to give the person that you're wanting to negotiate with something also. If you both get something out of it, it becomes a win-win. They're a much better, more stable ally. And that's what she hopes for from Hector. If he feels an alignment with Lenore and they're working towards one goal, then he's doing it because he wants to. And that has a greater chance of success. So, what do you want? I wasn't necessarily looking for a reward. I believed in his work. But obviously you expected something. The way that she speaks, it's heartfelt, it's soft. She takes her time and she listens to what Hector is saying. She's not trying to force him into something. She really wants to understand him, which is so important in finding an attachment with someone. You want to be able to validate, understand, and reflect back that you understand what the other person has said. Not just listening to the words that he says, but looking at his body language and the things that matter to him versus the things that don't. And if you get good at reading that nonverbal communication when someone moves in, they're more interested when they furrow their brows or move backwards, it's something that might have taken them aback or made them feel uncomfortable or they didn't like it. If their eyes start to sparkle and they're wanting to hang on their every word or start to speak more rapidly, that means that they're really interested in this. That's when you found someone's hook, the thing that matters to them. And people enjoy feeling that. The more that they get the things that matter to them, that dopamine hit, that rush of feeling affirmed and cared about, really makes us feel good and then like the other person more. You don't even get to leave. <laughs> You haven't got anything. I have all the power. And you're a pretty man in a box. I'm... I'm pretty. It just doesn't seem fair. It's an interesting thing, her throwing that little tiny compliment there. I would assume that she's probably just doing it to gain his affirmation, compliment him, which works really well for people. If you compliment them, that is in a way that's genuine or takes them off guard or they didn't expect it, or a compliment that goes with what they did. So instead of just saying, I really like what you did. I like that you did this thing. The way that you handled this really mattered. You want to attach your compliment to what brings that compliment about. I've been awake all day thinking about it. You, down here. I'm loyal to my sisters. To just fling open the door and say, fly, be free, pretty human boy. Fly, be free, pretty human boy. Like, it's quite flirty, but I think that she really does genuinely see him as beautiful. I think that he does garner her attention and interest. Do I think that it goes further than care or interest? I think that is up for debate. That would be a direct betrayal. Come and sit down. Also, you'd survive less than a day on your own. Okay, that's completely true and I would die almost immediately. 
<laughs> in diplomacy, if you're both coming at it from a power dynamic that's really divergent, the person that's giving you that's at the lower position may be doing it just because they feel coerced or they feel forced. There's a greater chance that they're going to feel animosity or feel oppositional. And when you're in that position of feeling forced to give something, there's a much greater chance that you're going to try to undermine it or find something better. And so that symbolic piece of them sitting down together and her holding her hand, she's saying, I care about you, that you matter to me. But is this just her using her female vampiric wiles to try to gather him in so she can manipulate and get him to do what she wants for her sisters and her? Or is it because she finds that that's more fair and to be able to do this from a much more equal standing would feel better for her? I think it's probably more the latter, but I think it's up for debate. Say it. Please. I'll be loyal to you. This scene kind of goes to that level of manipulation. It's not a fair promise to someone in the middle of the heat of passion because you're not really thinking cognitively, you're only thinking limbically. That part of your brain that processes deep thoughts is kind of turned off. And so it's not fair for Hector to have made a promise during this moment because he's not fully there. Most of this is taken up by that dopamine rush of passion. She uses this time to be able to make his promise so that she has what she wants. That definitely shows that Lenore is more wanting to get what she wants over what Hector would want, even if she has to use manipulation to do it. All these rings are linked, and his night creatures will be loyal to you too. And he's going to have freedom of the castle. He gets something back from this. Marana, shh, 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 the real people are talking. Even though she cares for him, she does care for him more like a pet than she does like an equal. She hushes him like you would do to a child. And she talks about him in the third person even though he's there. She does also care for him in a master to their pet kind of way. Uh, no, this way. She's caring, but I don't think that she's really loving towards Hector. I don't think that this is, I think that she has an attachment to him. I think that he entertains her and gives her pleasure, but it's not that feeling of love and adoration in a way that would be equal. Would you like one? Come on. I think that for some people, they enjoy caretaking, fixing people, controlling people more than having an actual relationship because that would be built upon trust and care and thinking about the other person's needs over your own. You tricked me and made me your slave. My life is over. Your life is saved and I gave you what you always really needed. I made you into my pet. And it's interesting because for Hector, he also takes these creatures that have been neglected or damaged and fixes them and makes them into his pets. So it's kind of interesting that Lenore's higher on the food chain to doing the same thing that Hector does with other creatures. Both of them liking to take things that were discarded and broken and giving them another life underneath their guidance is kind of an interesting set of similar characteristics that they both share. Your special hammer. Would you stop? Like a flute with no holes for fingering. <laughs> Would you stop? So when you blow it, nothing comes out? Good God, woman. The way that they banter now is much more of this equal thing. You can see that they have formed a real attachment to each other and how he can kind of be bemused by her silly innuendos and puns and she can tease him back. It's a much different relationship than the way that they started, but still not equal. I'd seen enough war before I was five years old and life didn't get better after that. I will never be comfortable with the idea that the best way to end war is to kill most of the people and cage the rest. And so that gives us why Lenore chooses diplomacy and also why she feels she's against Carmilla's plan. 
I think that a lot of times it is our childhood and the things that we've gone through that shape who we become. And so for her, seeing the horrors of war firsthand, she wants to be able to find a different way. And so that's why she's so much more gentler and kinder than her other sisters. She knows what happens when people use brutality to get what they want. Even if she sees them as beneath her, just like the little tiny spider with a cute little splint on its leg, she cares for those that are smaller or weaker, but still in a kind of manipulative, twisted way. She still does see herself on the hierarchy as higher on the food chain. And so because of that, you can do things to people that you wouldn't naturally do when you look down upon others. That's why it can be so dangerous because a lot of times when we look at someone as less than or not deserving, then it's okay to do something wrong to them. Is this not one of Camilla's ruling council? If you're here to kill me, kill me. But leave her alone. She is not the threat here. That kind of brings us back to that Stockholm Syndrome. He now could do whatever he wants to, but he protects Lenore, even though in a lot of ways she manipulated him, but he cares about her and feels, I think, a genuine affection or love for her. And that's the question, though, is that, is that genuine or is that just because of circumstance? If they had met in a different way, would have he still felt as captivated by her? Uh, part of me is like, yeah, Lenore's really captivating. <laughs> <laughs> but her affection is only superficial. I don't think that it's really that deep. And I wonder if it could ever get that deep, if some of her humanity was lost in her vampirism. I don't see her as genuinely affectionate as Vlad Tepes was, at least. But I guess that's up for debate. Let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. This one stays safe with me. Camilla, on the other hand, should probably made you. I tend to agree. Again, he is protecting her and wants to keep her safe. And that, similar to when she said, he's going to live just as well as we do, and he's going to have freedom of the castle. Here Hector is saying that, I'm gonna be keeping Lenore with me. And so, he definitely has found this very deep attachment. Now, attachment that's formed during trauma or hardship is often exceptionally strong because all of that cortisol and fear makes us bond with people much stronger, especially those that will keep us safe or we believe will keep us safe. It's hard to be able to parse what's genuine and what was more of a trauma bond between him and Lenore. I'm not going to sit in a cage, Hector. I'm sorry for everything you went through, but I refuse to exist like this. Be free, Lenore. What will you do? I like that Lenore one gives a really nice apology, and then she asks what he's going to be doing. She does care about him and want to know, but is care enough for both of them? And how deep does this relationship really go? I think that for Hector, he really does feel for Lenore. Lenore is his person. You can see him looking at the finger that he cut off that was that bonded ring that they both shared and with a little bit of, it seemed like a bittersweet sadness of times that they shared together that mattered, that he had also broken that bond. And so for her to choose her own way is also something that he has to accept. I think I'm gonna write a book. The future should know the mistakes we made. And recently I've been caused to know the value and the beauty of things that live longer than I do. And just like how Lenore had kept Hector in a cage, a bonded cage for Carmilla, Hector was loyal to Isaac and he was gonna keep her in a castle similarly, um, but she didn't want to. Like I see him running off and grabbing her scarf, like that only last piece of her. Anyways, that's probably just my emotional attachment to it. Um, I think it's a really, I don't know, I felt really sad about Hector losing Lenora. And I, even though I think that their relationship was a lot of really bad situations and manipulation, of the huge different power dynamic that they both shared, I do think that there was a lot of genuine care and affection. And when they had this banter and teased each other, you could tell that 
it was charming and sweet and they didn't have to spend this much time together they chose to and so possibly in another realm in another world maybe they would have maybe oh, if they had met each other on different circumstances that perhaps the ending would have been different also i did really like the relationship of hector and lenore the good and the bad. Two people that are more of the super feelers, caring people, caretakers, that were pitted against each other, but ended up together in one way or another anyways. If you like this video, you can check out my Wednesday season one compilation, ad-free, sponsor-free, only on Nebula, just like all my other videos on Nebula. And that's the whole purpose of Nebula. It's a place where high quality education creators can post early, post extended versions, also post videos that would never work on YouTube. Creators like Legal Eagle, Nando V Movies, Alt Shift X, Medlife Crisis, and so many more. And I've been posting my compilation videos like Arcane, The Jinx Saga, Vox Machina, Season 1, early on Nebula. And I also have a whole course on how to beat anxiety that is available only on Nebula classes. You can also get exclusive originals like Night of the Coconut, How They Adapted Lord of the Rings, That Time When, and so many more. Again, only on Nebula. And they're ad-free, sponsor-free. And if you sign up using the link below, you can support me directly and get both Nebula and Nebula classes for 40% off its annual plan, as little as $2.50 a month. And that's all early access, all extended versions, all kinds of courses on Nebula classes, all kinds of originals, from amazing Nebula creators just by clicking on the link below. And clicking on that link really does help out this channel, so thank you, and so does watching my next playlist right here where I go deeper into the psychology that drives us all. Give it a watch and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. You can let me know your thoughts on the relationship of Hector and Lenore in the comments below, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.